Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining NCMA today uh, as we talk about the Certified Federal Contract Manager Certification, or the CFCM. Uh, as you're aware, NCMA certifications are integral to your career growth in the uh, contract management. Um, in contract management, participating in this webinar is a first step towards uh, taking some career advancement with uh, uh, certification programs. During this presentation, we will review the background information of the CFCM certifications and paths to achieving from it. Uh, to paths to achieving it, we also want to hear from you. Um, the first half of the webinar will be uh, slides, and we'll go through a lot of information there. And then the second half of the thirty minutes, we will aim to take uh, questions and answer sessions. Um, so, with that all being said, uh, let's get started. Uh, for the purpose of the next few minutes, I'm going to turn my video off so you can focus on the um, on the slides and the information on there. And then when we get to the question and answer session, I'll, I'll come back on. So I'm your to I'm today's host, Pete Etchells. I'm the Director of Certification and Standards at NCMA. Uh, a brief overview of the agenda. We'll be looking at all the NCMA certifications. Uh, there are four. And then taking a deeper dive into the CFCM, the application process, the exam itself, and then some question and answers at the end. Quick overview of NCMA, uh, the organization itself, founded in 1959, focused on professional development for contract management managers. Uh, at this stage, uh, as we approach the end of uh, 2021, we have nearly uh, 20,000 members. Uh, and then the certification programs, uh, there are four nationally recognized certifications. Uh, the PCM uh, is uh, the gold standard in contract management and is ANSI accredited. And uh, there are countless educational network building opportunities through the programs. The certifications over the last few years have developed to, to the point where we now have four. The CCMA is our newest, which is, uh, if you want to think of it as the entry level uh, program. Uh, then, then you have the CCCM, which is on the, um, the industry side, and the CFCM, which is on the federal government side, uh, as the mid-level uh, exams. And then the CPCM is the ex uh, advanced exam. Uh, based on the symbol. Application fees, uh, obviously you can see there the application fees for the different uh, programs. The CFCM is a $150 application fee for members, $350 for non-members. Uh, so significant discount for being a NCMA uh, member. Once you have covered your application fee, uh, there then is a exam fee that you need to pay. That payment goes directly to Criterion, our uh, test vendor. You can take the exams either at a test vendor location, i.e. at a bricks and mortar testing center, or you can take it through an online exam. Uh, you can take that at home, at your office, anywhere where you have a good internet connection and take that online. Uh, the fee for the exams, uh, regardless of how you take the exam is $125 if you are based in the US. If you're outside of the US, there's a slight premium of $150. Uh, recertification fees for the CFCM, every five years uh, you need to recertify, um, showing that you have continued in your professional development with CPEs, uh, and the fee for that is $95 for members and $145 for non-members. The application process itself uh, starts with an application submission uh, and the fee payment through an online process. You can do that all online through the NCMA website. The application is then reviewed by the certification department. We check to make sure that the work experience and the um, educational background and the professional development activities that have taken place meet the requirements of the, the exam, and we'll go through those in just a minute. 
assuming those are all okay, uh, the candidate's criterion account will be created, a welcome email will be sent, and then the process is on uh, is on the applicant's uh, side of things to then set up their uh, exam testing date with criterion. A little bit further information into the requirements of the exam. Obviously, you can note there in the orange checked uh, border is the CFCM requirements. The requirements of the other exams are also listed there. Um, you need a bachelor's degree as a requirement uh, to apply for the exam. Two years of work experience in uh, contract management. You need 80 hours of continuing professional education. And then again, the application fee and exam fees can be seen there. And the exam can be taken in person or online, as already mentioned. Uh, as for the uh, bachelor degree requirement, um, the individual does need to hold that bachelor's degree. Um, degrees outside of the US need to be evaluated by an independent third party. Uh, Waivers are possible if there is work experience, and we can go into that information a little bit further further into the um, the webinar. A lot of people have questions about the um, about what counts as continuing education. Um, basically speaking, uh, attending courses, developing courses, teaching or publishing articles are the main ways. Um, organizations that provide such training include DAU, FAI, ISM, you can see the, the list there. Um, there's a lot of questions that often come about continuing education and often they uh, relate to a particular uh, individual's situation. Uh, the best response and the best uh, way to answer that at the moment is to uh, go to the full CPE guide uh, at the web address there, ncmahq.org slash CPE um, for a fuller explanation there. Won't go into that in more detail here on this webinar as it would take uh, the full 30 minutes and beyond. Um, but if you have further questions about uh, CPE, that is the best place to go. What is on the exam? Um, the CFCM exam blueprint uh, details the range of questions. The exam itself is based on the 53 FAR parts. Um, and you can see there each individual FAR part has been assessed um, using a job task analysis process as to how essential that comes up for most people using those. Uh, that's a large survey of contract managers, contract managers working uh, within the FAR uh, uh, um, scope. And um, the, the, the way that has come back is that certain FAR parts uh, have more questions on the exam than others. So you can see there parts 2, 4, 15, 16, 43 and 52 have the most questions. And we'll have between 5 and 8 on the exam. And then at the bottom there, you can see certain questions have between zero and three. Uh, the reason I highlight this here is uh, when you're thinking about taking the exam, this should help guide your revision and review um, and sets levels of importance for different parts as to how they come on the exam. Um, so knowing those uh, parts that have more questions on them is going to help you significantly on the exam and timing your revision accordingly. The exam itself is 180 minutes, three hours. There are 150 multiple choice questions on the exam. Each question, each multiple choice question has a uh, question stem with four possible answers. One of those answers is correct. Uh, three will be incorrect. Uh, there is no penalty for guessing. So it is uh, imperative that you make sure you answer all 150 questions, even if for some of them where you may not know the answer or you're not sure, um, it's better to have a guess than to leave it a blank. Uh, 
Of the 150 questions, uh, 10 are beta questions or underscored. These are new questions being introduced to the exam um, for uh, addition in, in full later on. 140 of the questions are scored. Those questions are not highlighted. So all 150 questions show the same. Um, and the only reason for mentioning that here is just to be uh, transparent with how the exam is designed. Uh, rough rule of thumb is one minute per question. So 150 minutes of question answering and then 30 minutes at the end uh, to review, make sure you have uh, all the questions answered and you've uh, gone back to any questions that you were unsure of. And the passing score um, to achieve a pass is 70%. Preparation materials for the exam, uh, as mentioned previously, you should uh, consider uh, setting aside some significant time to, to prepare for the exam and be ready. Obviously, there's a lot to go through with the 53 uh, FAR parts, uh, so knowing those is important. So the first uh, resource we have listed here is the, uh, the government website, acquisition.gov, which lists those all out. Reading, going straight to the, uh, the source of the, the information is always important. And the added bonus is that that information is freely available. NCMA also has a number of uh, publications and courses that are available. Uh, there's the online prep courses, uh, the desktop guide, uh, the studier guide, which is uh, a new edition is launching uh, later this fall. There are practice exams available. In some parts of the country, uh, NCMA chapters have study groups, um, and there are some review classes occasionally at NCMA national events. Um, you'll need to keep an eye on the NCMA website and your local chapter uh, information outlet uh, to keep track of those. Uh, but there is a number of ways of studying um, at various cost points, up to and including free, as you can see. Uh, you know, with the source material itself. Uh, this is just a brief uh, set of rights that individuals have uh, that we uh, publish as part of our process to make sure that everyone feels um, the process is in inclusive and fair and transparent. Um, I won't go through those piece by piece, um, but uh, obviously those are designed to make sure that everyone has uh, a fair and free process. So um, we rattled through those slides very quickly um, for the purposes of getting to the question and answer session. Hopefully uh, we, have some, uh, we have some questions coming in. Um, and I will start going through those. I will turn my uh, video back on at this stage. And we will start processing the question and answers. I may, uh, for some of these question and answers, call on my NCMA uh, colleagues uh, as they have uh, some more details on some of these. Um, We've got a couple of questions in here. So let me start with the first one. How many CFCM certifications have been issued? Um, Nini is uh, one of my colleagues on the certification program. Uh, Nini, would you know uh, the answer to that? Um, I believe right now we have roughly about um, around 5,000, um, just a rough estimate there. 5,000 have been issued going back through its entire history. And then how many do we have as current? Um, current, I can definitely get back to you on that answer, but I believe we sit roughly around um, maybe 1,500 currently. 1,500 currently. Okay, so 5,000 throughout all time and 1,500 current holders. Hours of continuing education are needed for application. Yes, the hours needed for continuing Application was back on uh, one of the earlier slides. And uh, you can see there 80 hours is required. Um, 
how long does it take to review an application once submitted? So in our policies, uh, we state that it can be up to 15, that 15 business days uh, for applications. We do try and complete them quicker than that. Um, but our, our absolute time limit is 15 business days. What can help in making sure that applications get completed quickly is ensuring that all the documentation is clear and included. We get a number of applications on a weekly basis that do not include the transcript that's required for to um, document the educational requirements, missing proof of uh, education, uh, sorry, uh, CPE requirements, um, Nini, maybe you could, is there any other issues that come up that tend to delay the applications? I don't know, like you mentioned, they're just big on the CPEs um, and getting those in properly. Yeah, so just making sure you have the right information in and it's, and it's clear. Um, and keep in mind, while you are fully aware of your, your, your background and history, we're reviewing it from scratch. So make sure it would be clear to a, 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 a new individual looking at it that, that doesn't have the, the advantage of being able to, to talk to you. If we obviously, if we have to reach back out to you and email saying, you know, could you provide us more information on this CPE or the transcript's not clear or anything like that, then obviously that, that adds to the time. Um, so, so that should cover that answer, I hope, for, uh, for application time. Where can we purchase the updated CFCM study guide if you are a member? Uh, Crystal, are you able to uh, jump in on that, or Nini? So the CFCM study guide, I know, should be available um, fall, late fall. Correct, and it can be, uh, it'll be listed in our bookstore. Um, I believe the web address, the direct address is ncmahq.org slash bookstore. Um, but in the fall, once that is available, that is where you can purchase it. And Crystal, while we have you on sure. the practice exam questions uh, sure. for the CFCM and the CCMA, where are those available on the website? So the, um, there is a CFCM practice exam. Um, there is not one for CCMA, but that is also found on the website under the learning, the main learning tab. And then you want to hover over learning catalog. And from there, you will see the practice exam uh, drop down menu. But again, that's only for CPCM, CFCM, and CCCM. Uh, Okay, very uh, good. Thank you, Crystal. I would like to find out more information on obtaining the CCMA certification. Uh, I would guide you again to the website, the NCMA website, under the um, certifications banner at the top. Um, and then you can link to, there's a, a page for CCMA. Uh, if you start there, uh, download the handbook. I would also strongly recommend uh, for those looking at this, the CFCM uh, to download the handbook. Uh, there is a significant amount of information there. Uh, this is a half joke, half serious. I recommend it as some bedtime reading. It's, uh, it, uh, certification programs are a little dry, um, so they will help you uh, get off to sleep, um, but they are also important in having all the information for the, um, the exam. Um, all the way through from the application through taking the exam, what to expect on test day, how the results are, uh, uh, are given out, all the way through to the recertification process. So I would strongly recommend anyone interested at this stage um, to go to the website uh, and download the handbook um, as well as look through the rest of the uh, web page there. Uh, Okay, so let's move to the, uh, the next question.
Are the CFCM questions aligned with the CMS competencies? Uh, not so much. That's more the CCMA exam. Um, the CFCM questions are aligned with the, the, the FARS. Um, so if you're looking to take an exam based on the CMS competencies, that would be more the CCMA. And then the more advanced version of that is the uh, CPCM, uh, which is aligned with the CMS competencies and then the further information that's available in the SIMBOC. Uh, the recertification process is uh, continuing education needed in that process as well. Yes, it is. Um, and um, you will need to do uh, and the, the number has slipped from my mind. Uh, Nini, can you remind me how many uh, CPEs are required for the CFCM recertification? It is 60 CPE hours required. 60. And that's the same for the CCCM. Correct. And then it's 100 for the CPCM. And then for the CCMA, it is, is it 40? It is. It is. So the CCMA is the entry level, so slightly fewer required. The CCCM and the CFCM are the, the mid-level. If you want to look back at the, the hierarchy on this side, and then 100 required for the CPCM for recertification. Okay, hopefully that answers the question on recertification. Let's see if there's any further questions. Um, Nini, I'm going to pass this one to you. Can credits used from participating in the CPE, CPCM prep course apply towards the CFCM? Yes, they can. Um, so any um, CP hours that you apply, um, so sorry, from the CPCM prep course, if you took it, you can apply those towards all of the designations. So the CFCM, uh, CCCM, and CCMA. So yes, it can be applied to CFCM. Okay, so those, those workers uh, do some double duty there. Yes. Excellent, thank you, Nini. I'm going to share this one with uh, Nini as well. Uh, Nini is is likely the person who, who who's going to be processing any applications that come in, so she sees these on a on a daily basis. Uh, regarding work experience, what counts? Can it be related fields such as practice of law, or has does it have to be specific? Um, no, it can be related fields. And what you would want to do is uh, refer to the CMS guide and find the. Um, work experience, um, you can find the related work experience there. Okay, and uh, are applicants required to uh, provide some sort of explanation as to how that links? I can imagine if it was someone coming in from law, they might need to specify what areas they were using or, or, or can they just link it to the, to the CMS? Um, they can link it to the CMS, and we would kind of ask if you're submitting your resume to kind of highlight how that work experience ties into contract management. So if they provide that in the initial application, that will probably reduce the amount of back and forth we need to do, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So hopefully that answers that, that question, uh, Shaheen. All right, do we have any further questions? I think we've been through all the questions in the Q&A section. A ah, good question here from Jacqueline. What version of the FAR is recommended for studying reviewing? Um, we've actually just uh, completed an update of the exam that went into effect on the 1st of September. Uh, and those were based on the FARs which were in effect in July of this year. Uh, to my knowledge, none of those FARs have been updated since July. So I believe they are current as of 
September 1. Obviously, as time passes, there's potential for files to be updated and so forth. Um, but uh, what I would recommend is just check back to the website to ensure that um, you know the date of the most up, the date of the most recently uh, inputted exam. And as and when we update the exam, we will update that on the website. So as of today, I believe it is current. That may change over time because we can't update the exam immediately every time a new, a new update to the FAR happens. Um, but we will make sure that that information is clear on the website. Thank you, Jacqueline, for that question. Hopefully that answers that for you. We are coming to, uh, we have about three minutes left. And I want to be uh, courteous with, with, with your time and, and don't want to go over if, uh, you know, it's, uh, I know people have other things to do. Um, is there any last questions uh, that anyone has um, that they would like to put in? I believe, Crystal, that this uh, this webinar is recorded and is going to be available. Um, is that right? Is that, how will uh, candidates, if they want to come back and, and review this website, how will they um, how will they be able to see that? That's correct. We will have the the slide deck as well as the recording available on our website. Um, I'm going. There is a collaborate discussion that's called titled Post Discussion for CFCM Certification Webinar on 9-13-21, that's today's date. That is where I will drop in the recording. It does take a couple of days to process. So please bear with us. It should be midweek of this week. You will find the recording as well as the slide deck. Excellent. And I think what we'll try and do, Crystal, is um take the questions that have been answered here and put those up in that format. So they're in a, uh, a written format as well for individuals. So if they don't want to come back and review the whole webinar, they can go there and see these questions answered. Um, and we'll, right. we'll put the, 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 the official answers up there uh, as well. So plenty of opportunities for individuals to, to come back and review. Uh, I'm not seeing any uh, further questions in the Q&A. Oh, one last question here we have from uh, Shahin. It seems like the most time-consuming part of applications is gathering CP hours first. Um, I would imagine that would depend on the individual. Um, obviously, you have to get your transcript from your university, which can also be uh, be, a, be a process as well if you don't keep them to hand um but yes i would imagine you, you do need to go through uh and and take some time to, to collect those hopefully individuals have been able to go to uh conferences attend webinars do training um and been able to keep documents on those um, but yeah that that is probably going to take you a little bit of time you can start your application online and you don't have to submit it on the first go through. So you can start the application and then come back to it later. It's held in your profile um, in the NCMA website. So, um, so from that point of view, you know, you can add bits and pieces as you go through your week or, or day or, or, or however you want to do it. Um, but yeah, that, that, that is likely going to, to take you a little bit of time. Um, I think that's reasonable to, to expect. Crystal, we're, we're right at 12.29. Is there anything I have uh, missed out or forgotten to mention here? No, that seems like that is it. Just remember to go back to collaborate um, to continue the conversation. Yes, and if there's any additional questions, uh, stick, stick them up on collaborate or anything I didn't answer today. Uh, we were unable to, to, to fill out for you. Um, please stick those questions up and collaborate. We will, uh, myself, Nini and Crystal will be checking collaborate over the next, uh, over the next few days to make sure those, those questions get answered. 
All right. With that being said, uh, unless I've missed anything else, Crystal, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we look forward to uh, receiving your applications to take the CFCM and uh, wish you a, a happy and productive rest of your week. Bye-bye.